Well, great research brought to you by DigiKey and a free later user power of engineering help you guys you find the things on digikey.com. Sometimes she's even looking for things that she's looking for. <laughs> yeah, no, usually, I mean, I look, I use DigiKey a lot. Yeah. So this is what I, this is what I, today, actually, today, this is what I was looking for. All right. So I was just talking about how I'm going to make a interface into uh, an Apple Disk 2 drive. And the Apple Disk 2 drive was a low cost version of uh, the Shugart five and a quarter disk interface. And to make it low cost, um, Woz, not Amanda Woz, who's a friend of the fruit, but Steve Wozniak, who, who started Apple. Um, what he did is he removed a lot of the drive interface that would add cost. And one of the things that he removed was the index sensor. And the index sensor tells you when you rotate around uh, one point. So as I was I just was showing off, because this video is cut, I'm going to cover quickly. You can fake an index sensor by having some black plastic on the spindle, the motor that goes around, and using a optical sensor, as shown here, you bolt it on, and then you look for that gap. You just have to have something that it looks for. And as long as it only happens once per evolution, it counts as an index sensor. And then you can tell when your data begins and start like you have a marker for the beginning or end of the uh set of uh, the flux data coming from the floppy drive because otherwise the thing is that the, the the rotation isn't consistent it can vary and so there's no way for you to know where to stitch the data unless you know exactly where the index is and so like having that like i did one rotation is really really valuable otherwise you're like did i die? it's like you don't know like did i do one rotation or one and a half very hard to tell. And also you want to have, you might want to also read the data consistently, uh, you know, uh, indexed to the index pulse track to track, which is a security system that was used in Apple II floppies to prevent uh, piracy. So one thing I was uh, looking at today is, you know, I wanted to have a breakout board that would make this easier to mount than this setup because there's like a little bit of like this kind of free wire soldering and then like, oh, there's like a wire here and a wire there and like three wires. And then, um, you know, maybe you have a switch as well. And so I wanted to make it easier. I wanted to have an easier to mount version of this sensor, which I, I love the sensor and everything, but it's it's not easy to, to use. So what I want is an optical sensor. I'm gonna use optical because I find that it's a lot easier. The mag magnetic sensors, it's like, it's kind of risky. You have to put a magnet and then it goes off and then it erases your, floppy drive, uh, your floppy disks. And so I want to be able to integrate all this onto one disk drive, uh, onto one breakout board for the disk drive. Uh, and so what I want is a light sensor like this one with a transmitter, there's an emitter and then a receiver, um, and then it bounces light off and then it gives me an analog or digital signal back. And ideally it would be surface mount and ideally it would be right angle because I want to have the PCB and then I want to have the sensor coming out like this for easy mounting, right? And I would, I would bolt the sensor PCB. Hold on, let me find like this, and then the sensor would be pointing out, like uh, you know, in in the plane of the PCB. Sure, that this is actually a little bit more difficult than I thought, but let's go to DigiKey and <clears throat> see what we can find. So I want an optical sensor, optical sensor. A lot of options. So there's photo interrupter slot type. That's not what I want. A slot type is, well, I'll show you. It, it's it's the same idea, but it has the emitter and uh, detector on opposite sides of a slot, which is great if you have a disc that's going through, but I don't have a disc. I'm trying to reflect off of the drum. So while this has the right idea, it's not quite right. There's also a couple, there's two kinds of versions, the reflective, there's photo detectors, but I think that these, yeah, this doesn't have the emitter part. So this is just the detector. Um, and so I don't want that. I want something that's integrated that has both because this, is, this assumes that you have some other emitter elsewhere. And I, I want to have like an all-in-one thing. So that's a different thing. So what I want is, again, not the slot type, but reflective and analog output, because that's basically the sensor I was using before except it, that version was uh, like panel mount or was like solder type. So I want to look for active. Uh, so let's look for active. 
And, you know, a lot of the other settings I don't really care about, like the current or the DC4 or the voltage, because again, this is all going to be at low voltages anyway. So everything is within reason and I can always add an op amp if I need better signaling, leveling, whatever, or potentiometer. What I really want is surface mount, if possible. So let's look at surface mount. Not a lot of options, which could be good or could be bad. And then uh, let's look. So this is, you know, this is very cute. You can see the emitter and detector, but this is pointing up. You can see it's meant to be soldered and it points up. Ditto points up, ditto points up, ditto points up, points up, 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 up. I mean, this one's like super cute, right? It's got the two little LEDs, but again, pointing up, pointing up, pointing up. So, you know, I looked through all of these because there wasn't a filter for right angle. And that turned out I actually couldn't. I mean, this one is not actually surface mount. I mean, it's axial, not surface mount. But of other versions that were available, <clears throat> I did not see any that were right angle. It was kind of a bummer. So, you know, sometimes you don't find exactly what you want. So let's get rid of the mounting type. That turned out not to work out. And let's do, if you can't do surface mount, at least do through hole because I don't want chassis or panel mount because that's what I had before. And that's like even more impossible to uh, uh, connect to the PCB. At least with through hole, it's like I can, you can solder it somehow. Uh, now let's just get rid of the marketplace for now. Just so we're only looking at stuff that's stopped. And then um, actually like what's funny is like, okay, like this one, I actually seen this one. This one's cute, you know, through hole clips in, but again, vertical style. Um, and then this is also vertical style. You see the two LEDs pointing up, pointing up. Uh, the two black bars are the, the emitter and reflector. This is the one that I'm, I'm trying to replace. Um, ditto, ditto, ditto. But, you know, what's funny is like I looked around um, and actually the best option was the first one. I kind of like flipped through these because, again, there was no real filter for um, right angle style. It was like, you know, you're expected to mount these however you want. But it turns out this one, the TCRT, <clears throat> sorry, still getting over this cold, uh, was like the best option. So if you look at the data sheet, it's available in two kinds, but this one will actually do the job quite nicely. It's it's through hole, but like, you know, we'll solder it and have the legs come out and clip them. And it's very simple. It just has the LED on, so we'll have a, you know, resistor and then the uh, photo transistor that we can have as the signal input. And it's pretty easy to use um, and it's perfect for bouncing stuff off and looks like, <clears throat> let's see the distance it works at. This is the ratio collector emitter distance. You know, it works best at um, one millimeter, like very close, but it'll work up to like three or four millimeters. It looks like even up to six millimeters, which is actually quite nice. Like it's exact, you know, that means I have a little bit of, of space for um, the mounting. Let me show the, the mounting. Oh, this is one second. Um, you can see the mounting is actually pretty close. It's a couple, a couple millimeters. So we should be like totally good on the distance and uh, the otherwise usage looks good. So I, I like this. Oh, it looks like they have a, oh, they have a version that's like bent if you want to have it like pointing it out, you know, up after all, but uh, just make sure that you, I'll get, I'll make sure I get the version that's vertical style. The good news is that there's lots in stock. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the footprint um, of the Vichy TCRT 1000. 40,000 in stock and they're like super cheap, 50 cents a piece. Um, so this is the sensor I'm going to use and I'm going to now design a PCB that will be able to mount on a standard five and a quarter drive or an Apple drive and give me that uh, reflective pulse for the index sensor. And that's the great search.